This has to be the sickest update for Cubases ever. Now I'm playing this project for a specific purpose and it is because it's actually using several of these new features that many of us have been asking for for a very long time. Now, first of all, I want to highlight that we can now finally add MIDI controllers to, well, we can map them so that we can control transport buttons and also mixer things. So if we want to control the mixer faders like levels and panning and stuff like that, it's now easy to set up. Right now, I'm using my Korg Nano Control Studio to control stuff inside Cubasis. As soon as you've got a MIDI controller connected to your iPad over USB or maybe Bluetooth, then all you have to do is to turn on the MIDI Learn system inside Cubasis. You can find it if you go to the settings menu and then to the MIDI tab right here. Now inside the MIDI tab, you have the MIDI Learn right here. So activate that and we get all these colored boxes. If I open up the mixer, we can see that all of this can be MIDI Learned. Now, how do you do this? Well. If you want to MIDI learn a fader, you tap a fader and then you move a fader on your controller and you're done. Once you're done setting up your mappings, you exit the MIDI learn by pressing here. Or if you want to redo all of it, you can press the reset MIDI learn and it will reset everything for you. Bro, seriously, like, do you know how much I love doing this? Uh, it's, this is so good. Next up, I want to highlight something else because with this project, well, you could clearly hear a vocoder. And this is something that has been a, a real nuisance for me for a long time. You see, for the longest of time, we weren't able to send MIDI to effect slots. And why is that a problem? Well, it is a problem when you want to use something like vocoders. And in this project, I am using Matrix Vocoder from Veersyn. It's loaded right here in an insert effect slot on this audio channel. And now on this audio channel, I have my vocals and I want that to be fed through the vocoder. And then I want to be able to send MIDI notes to the vocoder so that I can set the pitch for the vocoder. Well, we weren't able to do that before, but now we are. So if I open up the vocoder here in the insert effect slot, I'm just gonna close the list browser here and I'm gonna maximize the screen. Now up here, we can see that there's a new icon. And if we press the arrow here, we get this list. And here is where you select what MIDI channel you wanna listen to. Now, as you can see, I've got channel eight here selected because if we go out of here, we can see that channel eight is my MIDI channel. It's so nice to finally be able to do that. Thank you, Steinberg. Next up, another thing that you might see in here is that we've got a multi AUV3 instance of pure acid loaded. All right, so right now we have a completely brand new project. It's completely empty and we're going to begin by loading a pure acid instance here. Now I'm adding a track by pressing down here and then pressing MIDI. And right here where we can see the piano icon, I'm just going to press there until we get this thing. And now I'm going to go back out of this until we get to the audio units um, menu item here go into audio units and now we need to find the multi output instance uh, version of pure acid now there are more apps that actually supports multi auv3 output like uh, eg pulse for instance which is a drum machine rumpler kind of thing but we're going to use pure acid and we have to make sure to choose the pure acid multi output version now as soon as we do that it's going to load pure acid Next, I want you to look closely right here. It says Pure Acid and we've got the audio unit logo right there. And if we go down here, we can see that it says add four tracks. So if we press that, it's going to add the remaining tracks that this version of Pure Acid supports. You see some other multi output uh, AUV threes will support more than just four tracks or five tracks. And you're going to see whatever number that they're supporting there. 
Here it supports four extra tracks on top of the main master output. So altogether, Pure Acid gives you five tracks to work with. And what we need to do now is simply to route our stuff from within Pure Acid. I'm gonna close the list browser and maximize this window. And here we have Pure Acid. Now, the way you route stuff inside Pure Acid is, well, we can go to the mixer first, and here we can route stuff directly from pressing these boxes here. Now, this routing stuff can get a little bit tricky as soon as you start going into the actual AUV3 multi-output, uh, AUV3, ugh. Now, the way I've chosen to do this is basically I'm sending out the baseline on bus number two. And if we check that in Cubasis here, it's this channel. And we can actually change what bus that this channel is actually listening to or where the audio is outputting from right here on the side where you can see this number. Here you can also do bus writings, but we're going to keep this on two because the, here is where the baseline is now coming out. Next, we need to route the bass drum and we do that from the drum machine itself. So once we've selected the drum machine, we can get to the bus system if we press here until it says bus and here we get to assign our bus outputs. Okay, so Pure Acid has two bass drums and two snare drums and then a bunch of percussion and, you know, toms, claps and hi-hats and stuff. So I'm sending all of the upper percussion on bus five, the snare drums on bus four and the bass drum on bus three. And as you can see, it's working. And we're doing all of this right from Cubasis itself. We no longer have to use AUM or anything in the background. It's just, I love this. Sidechaining is built into Cubasis in a very brilliant way. It's very easy to route signals into the sidechaining. And it turns out that the channel strip compressor and also noise gate both support sidechain input. All right, so to clarify, what I'm talking about here is the built-in channel strip plugin inside Cubasis 3 here. Now I'm going to show you how to do this with a compressor. And the first way I'm going to show you is, well, <laughs> actually, when you try to set it up like the way I'm going to show you right now, Cubasis actually crashes. And I wasn't sure if this was a bug or if it was a limitation of the AUV3 multi-routing system, because what we're actually doing here is we're about to set the sidechain up on a channel that is also at the same time an AUV3 multi-output uh, instance here of pure acid. So I called up Steinberg and I talked to Lars Slovak, who is the project manager for Cubasis, and described this problem and showed him how I made it crash. So they know about this, and this might change in the future, so setting this up in the future might actually work, but right now it doesn't. I just want to show it to you because I know a lot of people are going to try this and wonder why they can't get the sidechain to work. So does this mean that we can't use the new sidechain? No, it doesn't. It, you can. You just have to do it with groups instead. Stick with me and I'll show you. So first up, this is how it crashes. So I'm going to open up the mixer here. So press the E right there and then open up the channel strip. And I'm going to close the list browser here and maximize this. So if we look right here, we can see a new icon. And this is the sidechain uh, routing system. Now, this is brilliant, but we are going to get a crash here. So, so just get ready for that. Now, to route a signal into this sidechain, all we have to do is to open up this list and choose one of these channels. Now, it doesn't really matter what I choose right here. I'm doing this to demonstrate what happens when you try to do this on a channel that is also at the same time an AUV3 multi-output thing. Okay, so it doesn't matter what channel we choose. I'm going to select channel number two here and it's OK until we go to press play, because when I do that, it crashes Cubasis. There is a way of doing this where you don't get any crashes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press add here and now I'm going to choose group. 
And in this group, I'm only going to choose the baseline. And there we go. So the baseline now goes out through this group channel. So if we want to duck the baseline, we can now do it from this channel. And now we won't be getting a crash when we try to set this routing up. So if I press the E icon here for edit on this channel and turn on the channel strip, open the channel strip up and maximize this, close the list browser and press the arrow icon here where we route our side chaining signals. Well, now we can see that we don't have channel two anymore. And so this is confusing, right? Well, actually, no, we are actually on channel two because you see, as soon as I added this second group channel, it got added right after the first channel here. That means that now our bass drum is channel three. And here I'm proving my own point. You see, the bass drum is not channel three, it's actually channel four now. The point of this exercise, why I'm doing it in this contrived way is to show you how easily you can get confused by your own projects when you're doing these routings. What you should be doing right from the start is naming your channels. So as you can see right here, I've got all of my channels named. So bass right here, bass drum here, snare drum here, percussion here, and I've even named the group channel, group bass. And so if I wanted to sidechain something now, I'll simply go into the insert effect menu start, and then I'll turn on the channel strip. I'll open up the channel strip. I'll maximize it close down the list browser and then go to this arrow right here and tell the sidechain to listen to the bass drum channel number four. And there we go. All I need to do now is simply to pull down on the threshold until I get some sidechaining action. And that's how you do it. So if you want to do sidechaining, you use groups and make sure you name all your channels when you're doing all these multi-routing things. Now I've shown you how to do this external sidechain thing with the built-in compressor here inside Cubasis. And you can of course use the uh, sidechain input for the noise gate here, making some very interesting effects. But if you want to use external AUV3s, well, if an app supports the external sidechain, you can use it like I'm doing right here with FabFilters Pro C. I absolutely love FabFilter plugins. And uh, when you're doing that, just make sure that you turn on the external input otherwise you won't get the signal in there but other than that you just routed just like we just did with the uh, channel strip one you just press up here and go through the list and do your routings now, I also want to take this opportunity to say thank you to Lars, who gave me so much time today because, yeah, I think we talked for two hours. And I also want to say thank you to both you and the rest of the Cubasis team. There's a whole group working on Cubasis, actually. And I want to thank you all. I mean, I was happy back when we got groups in Cubasis, but with this one, uh, MIDI Learn being able to use our controllers to control the mixer and transport buttons and finally being able to do this whole vocoder thing, you know, sending MIDI notes to the effect slot. It's, uh, it's just lovely. Thank you so much. And thank you for not charging us for it. I mean, it's a free update. It's sick. And that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, then give it a thumbs up. If you hated this video, give it a thumbs down. If you want to help out, you can do that by sharing the video and also commenting down below. Do you use Cubasis? What do you think about the new update? Let us all know, all of us reading the comment section down there anyway. If you want to support me in a financial way, you've got Patreon and PayPal, and you can also buy my music of Bandcamp. And I've got music coming out on Spotify and all kinds of places. Yeah, so as usual, all comments and ratings are very much appreciated. I wish you a very productive week. Now go finger all of your stuff and have a lot of fun doing it. Let's, let's go, let's go.